Okay, hopefully this works this time. Here's my ripple. We're going in. Open the, this. And today we're going to handle authentication. So the first thing we need to do is create a new file, which I'll name as utils.clj. And this file is going to hold all of the utility functions that's related to authentication. And that's why I chose the name of utils, because otherwise auth.auth is kind of a weird name for a namespace. And the kind of authentication that we're going to deal with is assigned JWT or JSON web token. So first we need to define a secret key. Now normally in a production app, this key would be encrypted and it will also be hidden behind an environment file or configuration file. However, since this is an example app, I think this is okay to have here hard-coded inside. But once we have that, we can go ahead and require a couple things from buddy.auth. One of them is going to be the backend, and another one is going to be wrap authentication. As you may ex expect, this is a ring middleware that we can add inside of our ring app. But the way that the backend works is that we have to provide it here, which gives us a couple of options. So what all of these are, are the different types of authentication strategies that we can pick from. The one we're using is JWS or assigned JWT, but there are other options there like basic and session storage, which I don't want to really get into. And then this function, all it really needs is the secret key that we created. So we can provide it like this. There are also additional options that we can add, uh, like I think there's token word, which will define the prefix word to be either token or bearer or whatever. But I'm going to go with the default, so I'll just leave this behind. And then finally, to use the wrap authentication, we need to make a, another middleware function. And I'm just going to call it wrap JWT authentication. And I don't know if I've already explained how uh, ring middleware works, but essentially it takes the handler function that we give it inside of the route and then wraps it inside of whatever middleware it is. And if you could think of this kind of recursively, it, it'll just continue to wrap it with every other middleware until there's no more. So essentially it's composing one mega function that is the end result of the handler. But the reason here that we need to wrap it this way is because this wrap authentication also has a second argument that needs to be fulfilled and that's the backend. And we need to add that at the end of this function. And I believe there's one last thing we need to add here. And that's we actually need to have the ability to create a token. So let's create a function here. It'll create the token by signing it with our JRT secret. And of course, let's open up our REPL and play around with this. So I want to create a token and the payload is going to be whatever we want to hold inside of that JRT token. In our case, it's going to be the user, which is a map that looks something like this. So after we refresh our REPL, let's call this no syntax JWT. Oh. That is because I forgot to import JWT. So we can call that function. So now let's try this again. And we get this long string. And this long string is essentially our token. So I'm going to copy this so that I could do something a little cool and just change it to the output here. Because I think I want to reuse that somewhere else. Or I could actually use it right now. So JWT also gives us the ability to decode a token with unsigned. The first argument being the token itself, but we also need to provide the secret as a second token or a second argument. And then if we decode this, we'll get the payload that we gave in from our create token. Okay, that's enough playing around. Let's add our wrap authentication to our endpoint. Now this is a route specific middleware, so I'm not going to add it to our main app ring handler. I'm going to go into routes and add it to just the endpoint that we want, which for us is users. So I'm going to surround this handler here with another map and give it the property of handler. So this kind of follows the same pattern as the post request where there's a nested map. So we do more than just give it a handler because we're going to add the property of middleware in which we need to import our wrap authentication or is it JRT? It's the JRT one. Okay, and this is the one we're gonna put inside of middlewares. So wrap JRT authentication. Now we're not quite done. I'll show this in a minute, but the wrap JRT authentication just means that this route can check for a token. Doesn't mean that it is checking it. So to show this, I'm gonna open up handlers and inside of get all users, I'm gonna add a inline def so we can reference it and see it inside of a REPL. I guess I'll name it temp. 
but instead of an underscore, we actually want the request object or request parameter, and we'll add it to this symbol or bar or whatever you want to call it, the temp. And we're gonna test this endpoint. Now I'm gonna go back to utils because we have our comment block here, and I want to show how we can test the endpoint without using a REST client like curl or Insomnia or Postman. And that's just that we could call the ring app itself, giving a request mapping so that it knows which endpoint we're hitting and with what kind of request method. So with this, we can evaluate it and there's our request that comes back. Now we can't read the body quite yet because it's in it's a string buffer and it's not a string, but we'll handle that when we need to. We're not concerned with the body at the moment. What we are concerned is the temp def, inline def that we created. There it is, okay. So it's this giant request map. Um, there's a way you can open up the buffer if you're using conjure. It's one of these, it's this one. And going all the way down, we have this huge map. Um, what was I actually trying to show? Oh, right. Okay, let me let me backtrack a little bit. So that's the request map that we have. There's obviously a lot of different properties on it, but wrap JRT authentication function, all it does is it adds a identity property to our request if and only if we have a valid token. So if we run this, we get nil because we didn't send in a token with this request. We can fix that by actually sending a token, and that's just to add headers to this request. Now this, these are request headers, so instead of a keyword, we're using an actual string here, so authorization, and we're gonna just grab this token, and I'm gonna put it inside of parens for a specific reason. So I'm gonna add string here, because earlier I said that it's preceded by a token word. The default one is token space. So if we rerun this again, not much changes except that the inline temp or inline bar of temp now has an identity property, which has our payload. Now all of that is important because to make authentication work, I'm actually gonna put it up here. Uh, we need to create another middleware, which I'll just call the off middleware. And like the other middlewares they created, it takes in a handler, but what we want to return is anonymous function that returns the handler with the request object. So it'll look something like this. Here's where we can actually get a hold of the request object and then get the payload from the identity property of the request. But we don't actually need to do that because Buddy gives us an authenticated, authenticated question mark, uh, function that does it for us. So instead of this line here, we can just add an if block and call authenticated with the request and then move that up there and on the chance that we're not authenticated or that the identity property doesn't exist, we could return with the status 401, which is the unauthorized error. Now let's save to fix the formatting. And I think I could also get rid of this comment here. So let's do that. So now we need to add the auth middleware to the endpoint. And I also noticed that we're not using the create token yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, in routes, all we need to do is get the auth middleware, add it to the middleware list of get here. And then we're also gonna go to handlers so that in both register and login, where we're returning the user, we also want to return a token so that once the user is logged in, they can actually make authorized request. So here is token, we to create token of user. Alternatively, we could add this to the let block, but I'm lazy. This is fine. And make sure you also add it to the login. Um, let's also get rid of this inline def because that's bad practice. Okay, so we're done with authentication, but there is one more thing I want to show, which is authorization. And the key difference is authenticated means that you can log in and you can see things. And authorized means that you are who you say you are. So you are the specific user. To do that, as a simple example, I'm just gonna add a other route here called slash me, which is gonna be a get. And get all users is just a stub right now, but it's gonna have the same middlewares that we already previously had. Uh, this time, we're gonna go to handlers to create a handler for me. 
Let me scroll down so I can get some space. The idea behind this route is that, so you can see all the users if you're logged in, but you can only see yourself if you are yourself, which makes sense, right? The response is gonna be kind of identical to login. So I'm gonna copy this, change the name to me. Now the thing that we're gonna change is the let block as well as the request. So instead of destructuring, uh, we're gonna take the entire request, grab it from identity, which comes from the request. And it should be in the same shape as the payload that we normally, or the parameters that we normally give it. Essentially, this is basically the same, but for clarity, I do want to change the name of this to payload. So the idea here is that we're checking the request for the user instead of the body of the request for the user. The outcome's still the same if there is no user. After querying the database, we're gonna give it an invalid credentials. Or actually, it would make more sense to call this unauthorized. So I'll do that instead. But if the user does exist, then we can just give it or give them back themselves, their own user. And I'm okay with leaving the token here as is. Why not, right? Maybe they're trying to refresh the token. So go back to routes. We can now change this to handle me, which is not an innuendo. But essentially, our app is now complete. We go to core, refresh everything, and start the server. And now we're going to test this inside of Insomnia rather than making our request inside the REPL, because why not? So first, let's do a post request to login so that we can grab our token here. And with that token, we're going to add to the header token space, the BAS token. And now let's go to, let's do a get on slash users so that we can see all the users. But now I'm getting everything, so that works as intended. Now if we do a get to slash me, now it, what the f what, why? So that's why. Okay, um, I did a little bit of debugging and I finally figured out what was wrong. <laughs> it all came down to get user here, this database function. We need inside of the payload, the username and password. So I think the best course of action is to replicate this function, get user. So instead of getting the user by the user and password, we're gonna get it just by the username. Everything else is the same, except we're not gonna do this check. We're just gonna send back the sanitized user as, just as is. We're not gonna do any um, encryption checking. This will be by payload setting in the payload, and then we can finally do what we've been doing earlier. I think everything else remains the same, so we'll just rerun everything and hope this works. Let's go through the same flow. We log in with username and password. Oh, this is a post. Grab the token, add it to the thing, make sure that you prefix it with token space. Do a get to slash me. And now we get the desired outcome. So a little messy at the end, but we completed our application. We have a better understanding of authentication and authorization from this video. And if you follow the series, you also learned a little bit of database manipulation using HoneySQL. But yeah, I think I'm gonna call it. And I hope you enjoyed everything. I'll see you all next time.